Welcome back everyone and it's time to go balls deep. Today we are talking about Mikey's dog impulsivity. What do you mean by that? Well, Mikey has a person inside of him that takes over his body and kills everyone. Hey yo, what the fuck? Mikey calls this his dark impulse that comes out whenever things go wrong in his life and he can't control himself when it takes over. Thank you to every single one of you that support our Tokyo Revengers content by the way. We asked in our previous video to comment, we love Mikey, if you want more content. Shout out to you, you, yes you, can't forget about you. You guys need to continue joining our gang by hitting the notification bell for more content regarding this manga that is absolutely fire! As well as smashing the like button just like Mikey dynamite kicks his opponents. I'm going to explain exactly how Mikey becomes evil, his trauma and what caused him to develop a split personality which he calls his dark impulsivity as well as why this is the case in every future timeline currently shown in the manga. We will also be covering a bit of his backstory, but if you're interested in Mikey's childhood and upbringing in life, which led him to become the strongest in the series, I suggest you watch our previous video displayed to you on screen right now. So from the get-go, in every future timeline, Mikey is depicted as the leader of the Tokyo Manji gang. They are notorious for having committed every single type of crime possible. It is described that every crime reported in Japan more or less has them involved in some sort of way. This paints a picture, a beautiful picture of Mikey. Wait, no, it's not beautiful. Oh, what am I talking about? Sussy bata. Now, in one timeline, Mikey went full psycho and killed every founding member of the Tormund gang. He even supposedly killed his childhood best friend, Darken, someone who was by his side all the time throughout every situation no matter how bad it was. Mikey was suffering to the point of wanting his life to end. In chapter 118, we see his life go out of control to the point of wanting to end his life, wishing he could change the past just like Takamichi. We learn in chapter 117, the gang make Takamichi leave Tormon in the future because of what the gang has become. Takamichi is technically the older brother and guiding principle they all needed to build what they wanted. One for all and all for one as Mikey puts it. But it all goes wrong whenever he goes back to the future because the 26 year old mature man of himself is now gone. And the past self of Takamichi doesn't know how to deal with things more maturely and better. So whenever Takamichi is forced to leave the gang due to the gang evolving into something more, it then causes Mikey to go on a downward spiral every time because no one can control him. Furthermore, another timeline shown in chapter 203, Mikey tried to kill Takamichi, telling him his long journey has come to an end. This gives us a brief look on how emotionless he became. These are just two instances of readers seeing future Mikey losing it all by the way. We also know there are more timelines where similar events occur but we never witness it. This means it's a destined outcome of Mikey unless things change drastically in the past through Takamichi's power. It will always go wrong for the gang since Mikey has dark impulsivity within him. This dark mind of his is described to be another person within Mikey that he himself cannot control once it's activated. It makes Mikey become a violent person with no emotions and no hesitation at all when it comes to killing someone. Now in order to understand how Mikey fell into this darkness, we have to understand who Mikey is. As a child, Mikey was portrayed as being very kind and funny. He always acted goofy and totally oblivious to the situations around him. However, However, Mikey grew up with no parents besides his grandfather who trained him in martial arts. Having no real guidance, Mikey found reliance and a form of inspiration with his older brother Shinjiro, where both of them grew up together in a troubled environment. Shinichiro was already established into the gang life, being the founder of the infamous Black Dragons, where he allured delinquents from the area to eventually become one of the strongest and powerful gangs in Tokyo. The Black Dragons and the lifestyle that came with it 
brother naturally became an influence to Mikey at a young age. However, Mikey made his own reputation. Being a tiny kid, he was seen as an easy target, where he had to deal with others constantly starting fights with him. And him being a genius in martial arts, he was able to respond accordingly. <coughs> We all know there is kindness within Mikey. Look at the interaction between him and Draken ever since they have ever met, where it freed him from the gang that was controlling him and making him do whatever they desired. Two years later, after Mikey and Draken met, in their first year of middle school, they decided to form the Tokyo Manji Gang, alongside with the other founding members who were their childhood best friends. All of them formed the six founding members of the Tokyo Manji Gang. This was inspired because one of the friends, Kazutoro, was having a hard time with the gang in his area. Of course, as his friends, they wanted to protect him. Funnily enough, this troublesome gang was the later generation of Mikey's brothers called the Black Dragons. This was the ninth generation since the eighth generation changed the essence of what the black dragon was intended to be later becoming corrupt and violent in chapter 137 and chapter 138 we learned that izana is mikey's half brother and he started to hate him this is why he changed the narrative and motive of the black dragons as he hated the fact that their older brother shinichiro favored mikey to take over the power and lineage he developed he was like why is mikey getting all the attention and i'm not so he's he, he basically a jealous bitch, right? Who wouldn't be jealous of Mikey? Izana changed the philosophy of the Black Dragons. During the seventh generation, he pushed his will forward up until the ninth just to crush Mikey. We will explain in full detail at the end of the video what this means, so make sure to stick around. Now, eventually, Tormon was formed, adding a new meaning to its existence with a simple goal of making a new age of delinquents where they would be respected and not to be seen as lame or the failures of society. Mikey adopted this philosophy from his brother Shinichiro, who founded the first generation to be a home for people with troubled backgrounds. During these early moments, Mikey was still on a neutral fence, neither succumbing to his darkness nor a hero for the delinquents. However, what is clear is Mikey's end goal, to change the perception of delinquents throughout Japan, showing the masses and society that they have order and respect to some degree. After all, delinquents are the byproduct of society's failure in supporting children during their time of need. These friends and the goals they aspired towards gave Mikey strength and his qualities and actual purpose in life. If Mikey was harboring any potential dark impulse at this point, it was more than likely subdued by the love of his family, which included his older brother, younger sister Emma, and his friends. Eventually in the story, the 26-year-old Takamichi became an anchor for the dark impulsivity inside of Mikey. In chapter 117, Mikey even admits this, that he needed Takamichi in his time of need. He wanted him to scold him whenever he did something wrong, just like his his older brother would have. He needed his love and wanted everyone to stick together to stop his evil self. However, everyone started to notice that Takamichi would change whenever his time leap ended. So they would miss that side of him and things would go wrong. Remember, watch my first Tokyo Revengers video that explains all of this and makes sense of it. This dark impulsivity within Mikey is thematically reiterated throughout the series, with Takamichi using his ability to go back in time with one sole purpose of preventing Mikey from becoming a monster in the future and killing everyone. Takamichi even risked his own life to save Draken to prevent this outcome, where as a teenager, being the captain of a top leading gang in Tokyo, Mikey was illustrated to be a person who has yet to understand morality and how to deal with situations involving others. This teenager shouldering the burden and responsibility for over 100 delinquents put Mikey's leadership to a test. It later even evolved to 500 and then more than he can even count to his admission. Unfortunately, even though his goals for Tormund were clear, he himself battled the true essence of being a captain. To make up for this, he is followed by his best friend and vice captain, where he is depicted as a wiser and older figure for Mikey to console on. In fact, 
Draken could be seen as Mikey's moral compass. Without him, Mikey would be unsure which path to follow. This is shown even in Chapter 12, Episode 5, when Mikey and Draken visit the girlfriend of Pa's friend, who was violated and physically abused by Mobius gang. During this meeting, they encounter the girl's parents, who then take out their anger and frustration on what happened to their daughter on Mikey and Draken. Mikey in response was actually going to activate his dark impulse and get angry and retaliate. But Draken forcefully made him bow, explaining to Mikey that all of their members have families and people they care about. And it's their responsibility that no outsider gets harmed. Mikey reinforces this problem to Takamichi, explaining how he doesn't know what is right and wrong. And Draken was his first guiding point. However, Mikey's dark impulsivity isn't dependent only on Draken. Rather, all these people People around him are the representation of the plug to the darkness in Mikey's heart. I am now passing the video on to Yusuf as he will go into greater detail explaining what this is and how the story explained it. So Mikey's downfall into darkness began early in his life. As shown in chapter 43 of the manga, during Baji's flashback, Kazutora and Baji decided to get him a new bike as he was always riding a moped. They couldn't afford to buy such an expensive motorcycle so they decided to steal it. But the thing is, they don't know that the bike they're about to steal belongs to Sano Shinichiro, Mikey's older brother. As they're about to flee the scene with the bike, Mikey's brother shows up and catches Baji stealing. Kazutora, who had just left to open the back door, sees this and runs behind Shinichiro, hitting him in the back with a bolt cutter, essentially killing him. So I ran up behind him with a hatchet, smash, smash, some. When Baji tells Kazutora that it was Mikey's brother that he had just killed, he goes into this frozen state denying his actions because of the trauma, which leads him to blame Mikey for everything bad that happened in his life, shifting the responsibility. Kazutora literally had to delude himself so he could get through this trauma. Now as they get arrested, Mikey shows up and asks his Baji what was going on, but all that Baji could bring himself to do is cry and tell him that he's sorry. With the death of his brother, it's very likely that Mikey's dark self started growing inside of him. That's because Shinichiro was everything to Mikey. He was his only parent figure and guidance in his whole life. On top of that, Shinichiro never harmed anyone with ill intent. He retired from the gang life and wanted to gift the bike anyways to Mikey later on. So they didn't even have to steal it. Just imagine how mad the situation is. Your best friends in the attempt to gift you something, they ended up killing your own brother. And Shinichiro was the type of guy who wanted the best for his family and truly did love Mikey with all his heart. The irony of their crimes made Mikey go further into this trauma, where his emotions had to be controlled and suppressed. During the bloody Halloween arc, his dark impulsivity resurfaced, where Mikey's emotions were released against Kazutora, who had the audacity to challenge him to the death. If Baji and Takamichi weren't there to stop Mikey, he would have definitely had killed Kazutora. He even stated this himself during the events of the bloody Halloween fight. And in fact, in another timeline, this actually happened, where Mikey went ahead and actually killed him. This was due to Kisaki's Tetra's manipulation. Kisaki aimed to be a co-leader of Doman and run the most notorious gang in Tokyo. To achieve his goals, Kisaki targeted Mikey, who he saw had huge potential. Believing the only thing needed for Mikey to excel in becoming a boss worthy of leading the gang Kisaki envisioned was for Mikey to submit to his dark tendencies. Initially, he tried to kill Draken, who everyone knew was Mikey's moral compass. When that failed, Kisaki planned for Mikey becoming a murderer. A good example to prove this point is when Kazutora was manipulated by Kisaki to kill Baji, who is one of Mikey's closest friend. And this was all for Kisaki to provoke Mikey into killing and entering the state of darkness. If it weren't for Baji taking his own life before he actually died, and then Takemichi relaying the message that Baji wanted Mikey to hear, Mikey would have definitely killed Kazutora. Draken has even stated that no one would be able to stop Mikey once he goes in this state. The only thing suppressing his dark impulsivity were his loved ones but one by one they ended up being killed by his own friends. Both Shinichiro and Baji were technically killed by Kazutora even though in the later timeline Baji did end up taking his own life if it wasn't for Kazutora he wouldn't have died. Kisaki even almost killed Draken. However all of this falls back on Mikey and in a bit I'm going to explain why Mikey felt responsible for the people around him. But before I break that down there was one more tragic event 
event. Also being the final and last attempt in Kisaki's plan to make Mikey fall into darkness, which all happened during the Tenjiku arc. In chapter 146, Takemichi and Inupi are praying in front of the grave of Sano Shinichiro. Whilst they are doing so, Kuruwana Izana, the leader of the Tenjuku gang, showed up saying he was also there to visit Shinichiro's grave. A few moments later, Mikey showed up with Emma. Mikey, well aware of the situation, tells Takemichi to take Emma away. After a quick chat between Emma and Takemichi, he realizes that maybe, just maybe, the reason why future Mikey fell into darkness might have been because of Emma being missing. This foreshadowing doesn't take much time to follow, as during Takemichi's and Emma's interaction, Kisaki races down in a motorcycle and smashes Emma's head in. Like, I definitely did not expect that. You didn't expect it. In fact, neither did Takemichi. My man was thinking that he was going to get hit and tries to protect himself, not aware that it was Emma the one targeted. Sadly, it was too late as he sees Emma on the ground unconscious. Mikey shows up moments later to see this devastating sight of his sister on the ground. Instantly, he asks Takemichi to put Emma on his back so he could take her to the hospital. Unfortunately, on the way, Emma dies, saying her last word to Mikey as well as telling him to tell Draken that she loves him. Now guys, on the level, I know that every single one of you were crying your eyes out. If you weren't, I swear, you lot are cold. Your blood is ice. Like, god damn man, what the frick? How did my sister just die like that? Now, at this point, before Emma slips into the afterlife, Mikey shows his love for her by trying to be strong, telling Emma that he always dreamed of Draken building a family with her. He dreamt that in the future, when he would visit, they would be drinking sake whilst laughing and having a good time talking about the past. In this dream, Mikey even saw the baby Emma would have had with Draken. In the last two panels of this chapter, we are shown that scenario and we are told that was the future that could have happened. For Wakui can illustrate this dream of Mikey and then the realization of how this dream can no longer exist showcases that Mikey going forwards not only just lost his precious sister but also a part of his life, his future. This hope of something so pure coming into fruition gave Mikey a big reason for him to stay around certain individuals that can keep him on the right track. Coleman wasn't just for his friends but also for him and eventually move forwards with those friends and have that dream. To make things even worse, once the day came for the fight against Tenjiku, after the Toman gang was fighting without Mikey and Draken during their time to mourn, Mikey suddenly shows up, surprising everyone that he actually came even after the death of his sister. The reason for this was because Mikey found out about Takemichi's time leaping ability and the fact that he's from the future and fighting the Tenjiku gang without them to save everyone including Izana, who is Mikey's brother. After a confrontation between Mikey and his brother, Kisaki got impatient at the whole situation, specifically at Hito Kakucho, the second in command for the Tenjiku gang, who was trying to talk Izana out of his revenge and stop the fight between him and Mikey. So he then decides to do what any ordinary teenager would, you know, um, draw his Glock and shoot him. However, his captain Izana, Mikey's fake brother, jumps into the fray, sacrificing his life to save him. Now, although the death of Izana is not necessarily a major loss for Mikey, as he had little to no information whatsoever about Izana, as well as Izana revealing that Mikey's mother wasn't the same as his, however, Izana was a big part of Shinichiro's life. Since he was the first person that approached Izana and guided him. This made Mikey think that he had some connection to Izana and had to protect him no matter if they were related. Mikey did try to save Izana in the end but he replies that he cannot be saved and that he never could have. Once the fight was over, Mikey, being aware of Takemichi's ability, asks them about the future. Mikey tells him that he would like to see that feature and would want to protect all of them. So after hearing everything from Takemichi, he decides to disband the Tokyo Manji gang as a way to prevent the tragic future Takemichi which he informed him of, thinking it's the best way to protect his friends from any danger, ultimately taking all the burden upon himself. By disbanding the gang, Mikey had pushed his friends away from him, including Draken and Takemichi, who were the only moral compass left in his life after the death of his sister Emma. Effectively with no other guidance, Mikey was left with no choice but to follow the dark passenger within himself. Later he created a new gang named Bonten, which then becomes a criminal organization in the future, and I'm talking full out criminal and not even being different from the Tokyo Monji gang from the start of the series. Even though he had protected his friends from a tragic life, Mikey had suffered all alone, only to be guided by his dark impulsivity. This is also one of his downfalls since he never asked for help, always talking about the burdens on his shoulder affecting his psychological state. But with all of that said, 
what exactly is this dark impulsivity? Well, in chapter 200, Mikey leaves a recording of himself explaining to Takemichi that it is as if there is another me, implying some dual personality. Takemichi, once hearing this, acknowledges noticing this side of Mikey, bit of flashbacks of what Mikey is capable of. The only thing that prevented this was certain people in Mikey's life, holding him down from following that dark passenger. From the onset of things, it makes a lot of sense why Mikey feels this way. It's likely that after the death of his older brother at the hands of his friends left him feeling confused and conflicted, in a way even responsible. Like he was the captain of his gang after all, he should have taught them better. Maybe he could have even told them about his brother's bike store or that he was about to get his brother's bike. Mikey's lack of communication might have caused this death of his older brother. These are some obvious thoughts that a normal person would be thinking and bearing that alone can lead anyone into darkness. Mikey was raised to express himself with his martial arts. At the age of 4, he was a prodigy. Knowing fighting as the only means of expression, it's likely that Mikey's brain switches off just like a musician who is playing an instrument or an artist painting a picture. This form of expression becomes a way for Mikey to let out his pain and loneliness. Mikey gets lost in these moments where it then goes beyond his control. This then leads to the death of his opponents and once you kill, it's pretty difficult to feel normal again. This is reiterated by a future version of Mikey in chapter 118 when Mikey himself states that the difficulties of this world can be fixed with murder. And then he even goes on to say all is well when you eliminate those who get in your way. Once Mikey crossed that line, it becomes too late. Putting things into perspective, imagine balancing yourself in some ropes where underneath it is just a pitch black hole. Now the more threads that's broken on the rope, the harder it is for you to maintain the balance and eventually once all of the threads break and the rope snaps completely, you will fall into the darkness. Usually if you're feeling angry or sad, you have to eventually find a way to let it all out because if you keep accumulating those feelings and never letting them out, somehow you will not be able to handle it anymore making you go berserk, you'll snap, you'll see red and then you won't be able to think properly, no act properly, possibly even turning into a sociopath and that's what happened to Mikey. So even after all of the external problems were gone, Mikey still had himself and his internal issues to deal with, essentially turning himself into his own downfall. All of these events and losses that Mikey suffers led him to become evil in the future. The murder of his loved ones, the manipulation by others trying to make him fall into this darkness which then created a Mikey we see in chapter 117 who ended up killing everyone who at one point was the closest to him in the Toman gang including Draken as well as the Mikey we see in chapter 202 the one that tried to kill Takemichi. This is where Takemichi plays a big role in Mikey's life being able to rescue Mikey from this fate by becoming a means like a rope that he can hold on to and even if he does fall into this darkness Takemichi would be his light that guides him out of it. All in all the message behind this is that Mikey needs someone to lean on someone to help shoulder his pain and burdens a friend a family member someone just anyone and Takemichi is a representation of that. Being very much like Mikey's older dead brother Shinichiro, Takemichi can scold Mikey when he goes in the wrong path. Tell him when he's wrong after all. Out of everyone around Mikey, he is the one that shines the brightest by shouting the loudest and never giving up. Anyway guys, that's it for this video. If you want a more detailed version of anything in Pacific, let us know down in the comment section below. Next up, we have Kisaki Tetta's life explained and why he is the person he is. So make sure you ding that notification bell to be updated with all our content. With that guys, I'll <laughs> catch you lot next time. Thank you.